cool in comparison to the colors in her face, and that's happening for a couple of reasons. Um, there is little, there's a lot, there is not as much blood supply, and all of this area in the center of the face contains a lot of blood supply from the ears across the nose, the cheek, and so the fairer your skin is, the more pronounced that color band will be of rich color across the center. It's also um, being influenced by the green color of that scarf that's bouncing into the throat a little bit, so it's, it's being a lot cooler. All right, so to mix that forehead color, I'd like to take uh, some flesh, a little Naples yellow. Naples yellow and flesh, just committing to a color note that's there. I'm also going to put that right at the side. I'm going to mix up a color that approximates the shadow color on this side of the forehead. And there are a couple things that I just know because I'm aware that the light is warm on Margaret and the shadows will have to run a little bit cooler. So I might take that base color, add a little bit of this Pro Mix color that's a very light desaturated green, just to cut the warmth of that a little bit. And that just doesn't have the same saturation or the same yellow and pink as the other part does. I am next going to look at mixing the color of Margaret's hair in this area here. It's neither light in the light nor in the shadow, um, but I'd like to get a color mixed up. And I'm going to start with a little bit of raw umber and white. I'm using the flake white because it is very transparent compared to the titanium. And I think that's probably close enough to start with. As the curls move down in Margaret's hair, they become lighter and more take on more of a reddish tone as they move away from the scalp. And that's something that's really pretty that I want to be able to capture is that transition of color change. Now the scarf is um, I imagine you can get a color right out of the tube that works for that. I'm going to begin getting at that color by using some phthalo green mixed with a little bit of white. Uh, the phthalo green is a very powerful color. It's a staining color. It takes a long time to dry. And it has the property that these new synthetics do of becoming more saturated in its strength as white is added, whereas virtually all the other colors on my palette become less saturated when I add white to them. And that has a little bit too much blue for me, so I'll just add a little bit of yellow. I've got a couple different yellows I can dig into to, to try to get at that green. This is often a, an opportunity that you might take if if you're painting your model and you're able to keep the scarf with you as you continue if she's not with you at that time. But I'm feeling that's getting kind of close. Now picking up this nice rich tone of green which looks, well it might be a little bit yellow but I think it's just fine for the first color note. I'll continue on with that. Just placing a little bit of strong color right up against where it will meet Margaret's neck. I will also put a little note right here at the side. And that's the color of my clothing in light. In shadow it's going to have, a, a, of course, a darker, cooler characteristic. So I'll add just a little bit of blue and raw umber to the color I just mixed up. and call that scarf and shadow color. The color in shadow is never just a darker version of the color in light. It has to be a different color 
because of the effect of the temperature of the light on the lit parts. I'm going to continue mixing some color to get uh, most of the canvas covered in the face area so that I have some paint to push around and start to work with. By taking that first mixture of flesh and naples, I'd like to make that a little bit richer and pinker. Um, I'll add a little bit of vermilion, see if that feels too orange to me. Maybe a little bit of the other reds too to deepen that color. And that's got a lot more red in it than the forehead color. I'm going to carry this all the way across that color band in the light. I'd like also just to start getting some paint down here on, on the chin. I have enough drawing there on my canvas to kind of have an idea where I'm going, um, knowing that everything will change throughout this whole process. A nice cool tone right there, knowing I can change that or warm it or cool it as might be necessary. And I find that that phthalo green has worked its way everywhere that I don't want it to be. So I want to clean that area up before I start mixing again. If you find that you're running out of room, clean an area of your palette. Um, one of the odd quirks that, that painters seem to have is if they run out of a color, they continue without it. Um, don't. Stop and put out fresh color if you need more or if your paint is getting too thick because it's been sitting out for too long. You can control the rate at which your paint dries by a couple of different things. The type of paint that you use, uh, that is whether it's ground in linseed oil or walnut oil, for example. Walnut oil dries much more slowly. So if you like a slow drying paint, you might want to seek out some that use a, a vehicle of walnut oil. If you like your paint to stay open or wet for a long period of time, you can use a little drop of clove oil in your studio and mix it up with your paint, not very much. So paint that might otherwise be dry in a day might take a week to dry. So you can add to the, the length of time your painting stays wet pretty consistently. All right, a few more darks in the hair. I'm going to use some of the asphaltum because it's a warmer dark than the raw umber. And I like to keep that nice and wet moving right into the background so that there becomes areas where you really can't tell where background ends and hair begins. And that will add to the interest of the painting as it progresses. In painting that lighter part of the hair, in this area here, I'm mixing up a color that's both lighter and redder than some of the other areas I have. And that might be a little bit too red, but again, you want to just get some paint on the surface so you have somewhere to go with what's happening. And those dark areas help, help you judge how light the adjacent one should be. I'm going to switch to my little cat's tongue brush, which is a really a nice useful brush. They come in various sizes, but they also come to a very nice point, so you can manage a broad stroke or a very tiny one. 
Um, and I like to use that for getting a little bit more at the drawing. Here I'm finding the area where the form shadow begins. And also finding the core of the shadow formed along the cheekbone. By using that Caput Mortum, it's a desaturated and cooler red than any of the other reds I have. But I'd also like to temper that with a little bit of green just to knock that red off a little bit. I'm using a combination of my mixed green and my pro mix color. Just drag that right over there. Even areas that look like they're going to be too dark initially, it's easier to go lighter over dark with oil paint than it is to go the opposite direction. It becomes very difficult to cover uh, darks with lights unless the darks are dry. beginning to hunt at the areas that comprise the upper lip, the base of the nose, estimate how wide the mouth is. And that nice deep shadow that's right under here. I'm going to paint that in a dark warm shadow color. Everywhere that you paint areas where skin touches skin, it's very important to keep those areas hot and dark. Um, you don't want to introduce blues or uh, violets or grays into the areas, um, say for example, where the fingers come together, where the eyelid has a crease in it, where the nostrils are, they want to stay hot and dark. Um, and that gives that sense of, of living vibrancy that you want. Just making that darker and warmer yet. It's kind of getting at where the mouth is. The ears are very red and are on most people. And of course, the paler your complexion is, the redder the, the ears appear because you can detect more of the underlying blood supply. And a nice red ear looks lively. All right, I'd like to get a little bit more hair in here. Once I get a little bit of color in there, I can start to work the edges and the exact shapes. that's really as far as I need to go with some of these color notes and mixing the color and I'll be ready to move pretty quickly into some detail. I'm going to use this small stick, the Dick Blake Steady Stick, so that I can move in with a bit of detail without having to touch the canvas with my hands. Drawing the various components of the eye. If 
the shape of the lid is very different from the shape of the crease, I should say, is very different from the shape of the lash line. I'm going to just, just gently indicate the gaze. And then look at the distance between the eyes. I want to make sure that they're not too close together. Measuring the eye on the left distance between the eyes, eye on the right. They're somewhat equivalent. So I will want to move this over a little bit, move this over a little bit, give a little bit more room. One of the things that I think all portrait painters tend to do is to paint themselves in each of their paintings. I think it's because you define a face by what you see in the mirror every day. Um, and I know that I have a wider amount of distance between my eyes, for example, so I want to give everybody a little bit of a walleye, and I have to know that and guard against it. Um, whatever the tendencies you might have, just becoming aware of them is more than half the battle to conquering them. You know, you know they're going to tend to happen over and over again. It's just a matter of how you decide to deal with them. Here I'm finding that tissue that forms the upper lid. Same on this side over here, although that's got quite a bit of red to it right there. And this iris is hanging from the lid at about 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock. detail. I'll turn the stick on its side and look how I'm controlling this. I've got a combination of raw umber and ivory black right now. I don't want to go too black yet, even though she has very dark lashes. some dark warms, a combination of asphaltum and transparent earth red to get a little bit more accuracy in the shape of the nose at the bottom. The placement of the nostrils. back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Decide how to relocate this on. touching the crease, not quite. 